Hey there, for this month's Behind the Scenes, we're gonna be looking at how I organize my photographs. So there are two main groups of photos that I gather together. Photos that I'm gonna use for references for my upcoming paintings and photos of my artwork. So I'm gonna talk about those as two different systems. So for photo references, First thing you wanna do is to make sure that your camera or your phone, and most of this happens automatically without you having to worry about it, but make sure that your camera is set to record the date that your photo was taken, because that's how I what I use to organize the photos on my computer. I import the photographs straight into my Photos app on my computer. So everything goes onto the hard drive, and is also backed up into the cloud. And it automatically is organized by date because the camera records the dates. That makes it so much easier to find. Now I know a lot of people categorize things into albums and pull them into there thematically, but I found it just works better for me long-term if all of the, the main photos are organized by date. So I don't have to do anything when they're pulled in because it's got that, what they call metadata in there that has the date on the, in the image. I don't have to do anything. It's pulled in by that. And I can search by the date all within the app, the Photos app on my computer. And it doesn't matter whether you're on a PC or a Mac, each computer comes with some sort of basic photo storage editing um, software. So that's what I use to organize it. So I can scroll through here and find the images that I wanna work from. And then I import them into Photoshop, edit them, do what I'm gonna do to them before I get going um, to paint them. And then I save them in a special order. So use the photo app is tip number two on your computer to organize them by date automatically. Then I always edit. I don't just use the photo straight from the camera to the painting. I go back in and tweak the composition to make sure it's the most dynamic composition possible if I'm gonna be working from a photo reference. So when I, after I finished editing the photo, then I put it into a folder and I always edit a copy of the, the photo, not the original. I wanna always keep the original as it was shot. So don't edit the original, make a copy of it and then rename it and save it in a separate place. So create a naming system and a folder system for those and stick to it. Don't change systems part the way through. That's tip number three. Tip number four was to edit the copy of the original photo and then store them by the date planned for the painting. So let me show you how I do that. That is, if I can get the correct, here we go. Here's the correct folder. So I have a folder on my computer that is just for reference photos. All the reference photos are in one folder. And I've been loading them in there for 10 years. So these are my reference photos going back to 2010. And I've used the system at least that long. So originally I was putting these in for my daily paintings and I would crop them, organize them, and pop them into um, this folder with the name, image for, and the date, and the year. The, the month, the day, and the year. And you can see I've got them going back a really long way. And one reason I like doing it this way is that if I go and find the painting that I did at that date, I can look back at the reference photo to discuss it, to show to people, to share with the, the buyer if, if they're interested. So I can find it relatively easily because the paintings are dated. So it makes the system um, really easy for cross-reference. So you can see how far back they go in there. Now, if I'm working on a series of paintings, so I might have more than one for the day, 
I'll still pop them in here. Two years ago, I did a series of cloud paintings. So I have all the reference photos that I used for that project in here as well. But it does make it easy to keep up with reference photos and then to be able to find them again later. So notice how simple this is. The real key to it is the naming system that it's always going to be image four and the date. Now, it, you don't have to use exactly that naming system, but use one that will work for you and then just keep on being consistent. Now, the other kinds of photos that you want to organize are the photos of your artwork. And those are in their own folders. And again, I've done this for a long time. Let's see if I can switch windows here. So on my um, folder for my art business, I have folders for the artwork going back for a long time. The others before this date are in another separate folder. So these go back to 2012, actually. So each year has the year, and then it says artwork or paintings. I think I switched it to paintings further down the line. And then inside of that folder, and we'll just look at 2020. Inside of that folder, I have a folder for each painting. So it goes by the year and then by the painting. I name that folder with my last name and the title. And the reason that I do it that way is that when I submit artwork to the gallery or to um, apply for funding for a grant or to a residency, I need to have it already named, and this means I just don't have to go back and put it in later. It just makes it easy to keep up with all the files, and I've done it this way for literally decades. So name, and then the title, and that makes it easy on like my dealers because they can tell what the title is simply by looking at the name of the folder or the file. So let's open one of these up, and we'll go with afternoon fog. And inside of that folder is the high res image for print. You can see over here, it's even compressed. It's two and a half megabytes. Then there, I'll go ahead at the same time as I'm editing the high res image, I'll edit a slightly smaller version for the web. So this one, it, it always has that same naming structure title and then I put append the word web at the end so that I know that's for the web. It's not the high res image. That way I can keep them straight. And if I have enough time, I'll go ahead and add a third type to it. I'll add uh, an image that is CMYK for print, which is high res and it's, it's converted to the color system for print. So there'll always be at least two and sometimes three versions of the image in the folder. I don't wait around to batch these. When I finish a painting, I photograph it right then and there, edit it, put it in the folder, it's done, one and done. I got in that habit 10 years ago and I haven't given it up. It makes it so much easier to keep up with things. If you wait to shoot the photo, until you have a whole bunch of them to do, you'll wait forever and you'll have a hard time keeping up with your inventory and with your website. So let's go over those again really quickly. So for photo references, number one is you wanna make sure that your camera is set to record the date the photo was taken. And like I said, most of those do it automatically. Number two, use the photo app on your computer to organize them by the date. Number three, create a naming system and stick to it. Number four, edit the copies of the original photos for the painting reference and store them by the date planned for the painting. That's what I do. And it really doesn't matter if you follow the same system. It just matters that you have a system so that you can have easy access to those later. The second group of photos you wanna organize are the ones of your artwork. Number one, store the photos of finished paintings by the title in a folder for the year. If you're producing a huge number by the month, then number two, crop and edit as soon as you take the uh, as the you finish the painting. Then save a high res for print and a low res for the web. 
Number three is to add that ending slash web to the title so that it's really easy to find those lower res images in a hurry. And I know somebody asked me not too long ago, um, why do I put the slashes between the words? Because the computer will automatically add a dash and I just like the under slash better. It's just one of my quirks, but you could put a dash in there. It doesn't matter. Um, it goes back to the days when computers preferred to not have space between the words, but um, you couldn't leave a blank space. It's just a habit I got into. So there's no real significance to that, but you do want to add on the web at the end for any of the images that are lower res. That's it. That, I, my system's not any more complicated than that. It doesn't have to be highly complex. The main thing is to get a system and then stick with it so you can find stuff late, later and it's easy to hand. Take care, everybody, and happy painting.